Hey everybody, this is Eric Sullivan again. This time we're going to be talking about plotting in Python. We're going to be using the matplotlib library to make some plots of some mathematical functions. So let's jump in. The matplotlib library is designed to be a really simple to use library for doing plots. Now, there's some caveats. It will generate static 2D plots. If you want something fancy, you can do a lot of fancy with matplotlib, but there are other plotting tools that do really fancy stuff. Most of the time, you don't need really fancy. Most of the time, you just need a simple plot. So we're going to get you going with an example here in a second. But really, every single plot that we do, we have to set up the domain, set up the function, plot the function, and then plot all of the features. So here's our first simple example. I want the function sine of x on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And then in matplotlib, we're going to do all of these things. So I'm going to build an array for the domain. I'm going to build an array for the function values. I'm going to plot. I'm going to turn any special features on. And then I'm going to show the plot. Every single matplotlib plot follows these same basic features. So let's do it. I'm going to import numpy as np. And I'm going to imp because I'm going to use numpy. I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. OK, so this is a little bit of a funky one. Matplotlib is a plotting library. Inside of it is the pyplot library. The common nickname that we have for the pyplot library is plt. Inside of it are all of our plotting tools. So anytime you're going to plot, basically, these two guys are going to come first. Now, if I'm going to plot this function sine of x, the first thing I need to do is build the domain, 0 to 2 pi. So I'm, I can do this in a number of ways. So I'm going to say x is, it's a numpy. Well, let's see here. I'm going to do an arrange 0 to 2 times np dot pi. And I'm going to go by something small. So I'm going to go by point ones. So start at 0, go to 2 pi go by 0.1s. I could make it 0.5s, I could make it 0.01s, whatever. I just want a bunch of them between 0 and 2 pi. OK, I'm going to create my function, which is the function np dot sine of x. This is a little bit overkill to call it a, a lambda function. So maybe in this particular case, let's just say, hey, take those x's, shove them in there. I'm going to get my f's. OK, so real simple. This, this now, if I run this, I'm going to come over here into a scratch cell and just check out what I have. My x's are 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So it's just by 0.1s up to 2 pi, it's, or at least as close as I could get to 2 pi if I'm going by 0.1s. My f's, those are all of the signs of those things. OK, so it's really just two lists of numbers. So you should really take careful note here. OK, so what the plot command does, plt.plot, it takes the x list and matches it up to the list of y's and makes the plot. Now, the default is to plot each point connected by straight lines. OK, so if I just go ahead and run that, this is the simplest version of a plot that we can make. Create the domain. I'm going to comment this heavily here. Oops. Create the domain, create the function values. And then plot. Now, I should put plt.show because that tells Python that I was done creating the plot. And there's my plot. Now, I can do many, many more things to this. But before I make it more fancy, I want to prove to you that it's just doing points that are connected by straight lines. Instead of going by 0 0.1, let's go by like ones. 
Notice that this is really jagged. I've got a point at x equals zero, a point at x equals one, a point at x equals two, a point at x equals three, and so on. They connected them with straight lines. If I went by twos, it's super jagged. It doesn't even look like a sine function anymore. But if I go by something small, your eye is deceived into thinking that the straight lines connecting all of these points actually make up a, a, a small curve or a nice curve. Actually, what you do is you get more points than there are pixels on the screen eventually, and this thing just is a nice smooth curve for all practical purposes. Okay, now I can back this off and I can finally, I can find the point where I can't tell the difference by eye anymore. At 0 0.2, I can still that, tell that's connected by straight lines. 0 0.15 on this particular plot, I can't really tell. Right, so you, you can fiddle with how many points you want to take. Okay. Pause now, build this plot. I'll wait. Go ahead, put me on pause, build this plot. I don't have any good pause music. Okay, good, you're back. Now let's make this plot a little bit nicer. In the plot command and the plot show, notice that it's just a white background. One thing I like to always add is a grid. So plt.grid adds a gray mesh grid behind the, the plot. It actually allows me a little bit more ease of telling where points are on this plot. And then one more thing I like to do is this is the x's, this is the y's, and then I'm going to say the color. So I'm going to do a tick blue. And it gives me blue. The default blue notice was different than blue itself, or R for red or K for black, or G for green, or C for cyan. There's a couple really simple colors here, M for magenta, right? So decide on your color. I'm gonna go with red just for kicks. Then you can also tell it, I want it to do dashed by going dash dash, for example. Now I've got a dash curve. I want dot dashed, so put dot dash. Ooh, that's kind of fancy. What if I just did dot? It just shows me the dots. That's each one of my dots going by point ones. Now point twos, now by point fives. It's just the dots on the curve. If I did dot dash on that, right? So that's dots and the lines. If I did dash dot, I think that does something differently. Yep, it does. Okay, so there are lots of little sneaky ways that you can create beautiful, very quick plots and actually show exactly what you needed to show. Now, let's do one more thing here. I'm going to do plt.legend. Now, legend is going to accept a list of legend entries. This is going to be some text, so I'm going to put it in quotes, and there's the sign function. Well, I said one more thing, actually a couple more things. I'm making this plot from really simple pieces. I have a domain and a range, and now I'm gonna just start building the pieces of the plot so that I get progressively better and better and better parts of the plot put together. So let's do plt.xlabel. All right, the x label was x, plt.ylabel. Oops, if I spell it correctly, label. That was f of x this time. And then I'm going to do plt.title, which was f of x equals sine of x on 0 to 2 pi. And now I have a really nice, almost publication quality plot, which is more than you can do in most um, plotting software in such really easy code and syntax. Okay, put me on pause. Go ahead and build this plot now. No, seriously, put me on pause, go ahead and build it. Okay, we're off pause. Now I want to layer a few plots on top of each other, and I want to see how this, this works. So I'm going to start by copying all of the code that I had before. Control A, Control C to copy. Control V, okay. Now, in this particular one, I wanted the sine function, the cosine function, and the sum of those two. So I'm going to create g is equal to np.cosine of x. 
that's going to take the cosine, or is going to take the x and shove it into the numpy cosine function. And h is equal to f plus g, okay, which is just take the list of y values from f and add that to the list of y values from g. Okay, now there are two ways I can do this. I can take my plotting code and just add more plt.plot commands, x comma g comma, let's see, let's make the cosine blue and we're gonna make it solid, ooh, blue, sorry, and solid. And then plt.plot x comma h comma, we're gonna make that black and we're gonna make it dash dot because whatever. And then I'm going to add some legend entries here. And then my title needs to be changed as well. Okay. So notice the only real things that I added to this code, I added two plot lines and I added two more function definitions. If I run it, okay, it layers those plots on top of each other and it will stop layering as soon as you say plt.show, which is great. Okay, so I've got these three plots on top of each other and I can actually see quite a lot out of those three plots. Now I'm going to show you one more way to do this. So I'm going to actually copy that code. I'm going to put it down here in another code block. Okay, so it's all the exact same code. This time though, I'm going to wipe those two out. The plot command can actually accept multiple plots at once. So I did X comma F and then the color and the style. Then I'm going to do X comma G and the color with the style and x comma h with the color. What did I use for the color? Black and the style. This is a bit more of a compact way to make your plots. So control enter. I get exactly the same picture that I had before, but I've saved myself just a tiny little bit of typing in the plot command. Now, sometimes I will layer plots on top of each other like this. Sometimes I will put all of the plots into one line of code like that. Okay, see me in the next video for some more interesting plotting routines in Matplotlib.